right, welcome to Celtics Post Game Live. Celtics get the win, 114-94 over the Miami Heat. Take a 1-0 uh, series lead. Tom Giles, Eddie House, Brian Scalabrini, and uh, saw a couple of those threes in that, that huge third quarter. And obviously, we'll talk about what happened in the final couple minutes of this game as well. Well, let's get into that third quarter where they just decided enough's enough and the Celtics kind of distanced themselves yeah. and, and built that 34-point lead. Franchise record tied the franchise record for threes at 22. They got them all night. They they knocked down shots. I mean, the only thing we could even complain about with this team today is at the end just letting go of the rope a little bit. But this team right now, they were clicking on all cylinders and throughout this game, they had their game plan and they played with a ton of confidence. Yeah, and they're, they're, it seemed like Miami's heat main focus was Jason Tatum not going to be the guy to beat us. We're going to send two at times. You've seen three leaning over in his direction. He made the right play. Ended up with 10 assists. Got the triple double that uh, that, you look, that he was looking for. Um, just make, making the right play. Making him pay. Miami's going to have to go back to the drawing board and figure out, you know, what are they going to do to try to stop this team because it's so many weapons. And I talked about it earlier. Porzingis being the X factor. And I, and I thought Porzingis did a, a fantastic job. Not only inside, outside, anywhere that he needed it protecting the rim. I thought he was great tonight. Think about like Miami is a good team. They're prepared. With Porzingis out there, we are unguardable. Like this be teams have to account for him, which will open up the floor for other people. Eventually will open up the floor offensively for a guy like Jason Taylor. All right. Uh, Derek White, meanwhile, had a huge three in the fourth quarter there when Miami was kind of rolling and trying to make this thing a game late. Uh, he's standing by with Abby Chin down on the floor. Abby? Well, Derek, you guys had to wait long enough, but you came out here, took a man from the jump. What was the collective mindset? So we're ready to go. Um, like it's been forever since we played, but a uh, good week of practice, ready to go, and got a good win right here, game one. For you personally, you didn't get your first field goal until the end of the second quarter, but then in the third quarter came out in double digits. What got you going? I missed some good shots in the first half and uh, just continue to get those good looks and find that paid some. So uh, it's going to make some and get a good win. Defensively, you guys held them under 60 for those first three quarters. What did you like best at that end? We made them work. Uh, I mean, they're going to make tough shots. They're going to they're going to keep coming at us for 48 minutes. So uh, learn from this one and be ready for game two. That last play in game, the Miami fans were cheating, were chanting, "We want Boston." What kind of message does this win send? No message. Just we won one game. We got to keep going. Derek, thank you. Congrats. Yep. All right, Scal mentioned 22 threes for the Celtics, uh, which ties a uh, postseason franchise record, 22 of 49. So they're not just getting and making 22 threes, but they're making them at a, at a high clip as well. Right? Yeah, well, they're moving the basketball. They had 27 assists, and, and they were just making the right play. And if it wasn't the pass that led to the shot, it was the hockey assist, or it was the double hockey assist, I would call it. You pass to me, I pass to him, he hit somebody else. You were wrong and pass to him. Like, well, if I pass to you, you got to skip and go What's to Kevin. Or what? No, well, I'll just shoot it. <laughs> yeah, you might as well, because that's, yeah, that's what they should do. <laughs> One thing is, with this team, with the shooting, they have the weapons, and they're very unselfish, and they got great spacing. We were, at times, me and Eddie would talk last year. Man, our spacing's not good. Like, we're not going to be able to win like this. We, I don't like playing five out. This year, it's completely different. They have the bodies. They have the guys coming off the bench to knock down threes. Like, this team is really clicking. All right, now, now let's get to what we saw there in the final couple minutes because Miami trying to make a game of it again. He's still the Celtic starters out there as, you know, the Heat were able to chip away. And uh, Jason Tatum going up for a rebound with about 90 seconds to go and, and Caleb Martin crashing into him. You saw Tatum bounce up right away scout but what did you make of that uh, of that play break it down I mean I don't want to break it down while we're knocking down all those threes but here it is right here look at all right the only thing I would say about this is I'm not trying to start nothing here but I'm just Eric Spolster calls a timeout with a minute 30 down by 16 30 seconds later that play happens 30 seconds later why is he calling a timeout at a 130? Down 16. And then why is that play happening? That play right there, 30 seconds later. I don't know, man. It looked, what that looked that? shady to me. What you call that? Code Red. <laughs> Explain to the people what Code Red means. Code Red. You know, like in uh, A Few Good Men. Did you order the Code Red? <laughs> Did you order the Code Red? You 
You GD right, I did. <laughs> <laughs> good, good job, Seth Stringer. No, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like, why, why that play right there? Why would, why would you see that play? Why the timeout down 16 with 130 left? Yeah, man, and I, I, right I, I didn't that like that. Play. And you go at the best player. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. So is this them trying to send a message, or is that just a dirty play? I mean, that's, to me, it's a dirty play. Yeah. I think anybody should look at that. Like, I think Martin should get suspended for that. That's a dirty play. You can't do that. Like, just think about that. The NBA is about the star players. The idea of winning a championship is your star players have to stay healthy. And you just, the guy goes up and you just ram into him? That ain't basketball. No, that wasn't basketball. And, you know, uh, fortunately, nothing happened to Jason it Tatum because it could, it, it could have been bad. And, you know, to be honest with you, we were up 30-some points. And if they just take care of business the first two minutes, three minutes sure. of that th uh, fourth quarter, then those guys shouldn't even be out there, yeah, you right. know, but, right. you know, they, again, I think they kind of let go of the, I mean, it's, it's tough, human nature. You're blowing a team out, the crowd, everything's feeling good. Guys stop moving the ball, taking shots, n not paying attention on defense the same way, a b bunch of backdoor cuts sure. and things like that, but we still were able to get the win by 20. I, this is the thing I love about this game is that every time Miami made a, a, a run, a, a mini run, we responded, you know, and we responded with defense, defense that led to offense, not just offense and offense and offense or trading buckets. We got stops after stops, and then we scored on them. Well, when asked about it afterwards, Jason Tatum did, uh, his, his first response was that's playoff basketball, but I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, replay. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm curious how, how it impacts the rest of the series. Number one, the NBA has to take a look. I don't know if they're going to find him or not. I don't know if they're going to suspend him, but, like, that's not, that's not a basketball play. I don't, I don't care what anybody says. Like, if it, just ramming into a guy that's jumping for a rebound? Did he go for the rebound? Did he jump? It wasn't over the back. He trucked him. That's weak. To me, that's weak. All right. Of course, uh, bring you all of the latest from the locker room and the podium and everything else because uh, well, I'm sure we'll hear from the players uh, on this one as well. It goes, you know, we talked about it before the game. You go back a couple months ago when these two teams got yeah. into it a little bit and you wondered, you know, would you see – Especially considering the fact this is the fourth time they're meeting up in the last five years. Yeah, I, I thought that they would probably bring up that whole issue. I haven't heard the national media talk about it. We talked about it on this show, but the whole Duncan Robinson, uh, Jalen Brown situation. But I think that that play right there is going to send a message, and it'll be interesting how both teams respond moving forward. Well, I'm expecting Miami to come out and just try to be super physical. You say junk up the game, you know, with the zone, but I also think just being super physical like borderline you know they're, they're going to toe the line of uh, being physical but that was over the line that was I'm not saying that that wasn't I'm saying yeah, they're going to the they're going to play that type of that brand of basketball because I they have to go back and look at this film and say that's the only way we could beat For them. sure, no doubt. All right, 114-94, and 94, the final score. Here's the Celtics get the win in game one. So they take a one nothing series lead. You got game two coming your way Wednesday here at the Garden. Triple-double from Jason Tatum, 23-10-10. and 10. We got plenty more to come here on Celtics Post Game Live. Quick break, we're right back.